Is this even a fair comparison? One machine costs over $3,000, the other just under two. Both claim speed, both promise precision. One is made in China and the other right here in the US. And both just printed the same ABS gear right here in our studio. Now, before we dive in, scroll down and tell me which printer do you think is going to win? Is it gonna be the Fusion 3F200 or the Bamboo Lab H2D? Which one's gonna have the better print? Before we get too far into this, let me remind you that both machines were sent to me for testing. Fusion 3 shipped the F200 and Bamboo Lab, of course, sent me the H2D, but no one paid for this content and no one gets to see it before you do. Like always, I use the machines here in the studio and you get my honest take. And uh, yeah, with that said, let's start with the most obvious difference, price. The Fusion 3 F200 comes in at 3,299. It's built for reliability, safety, and commercial uptime. The Bamboo Lab H2D, it's 1,999. For that price, you get a chamber heater, dual extrusion, and the potential for multicolor. Now, I am a total realist, so I'm not going to pretend here the H2D is a flagship printer that is loaded with features. Features that I'm actually not sure any other 3D printer company can even touch or even come close to right now. So like I said at the open, is this really a fair comparison? Well, not really. But besides the features, I really wanna highlight the print quality between the two, which is really important and that's coming up. So hang on, stick with me. I'm gonna show you the difference between these two. Both printers are enclosed Core XY machines, released this year, but their feature sets aim at very different users. The F200 focuses on precision and security. You get ethernet, Wi-Fi, USB, but no cloud. It runs hardened firmware, and it uses Prusa Slicer, basically. The F200 is aimed more at commercial and industrial users who are looking for quality as well as domestic customer support, where they can pick up a phone and get an engineer on the phone in minutes. The H2D, on the other hand, is designed for flexibility and control. You get USB, Wi-Fi, and the full Bamboo Cloud experience, and it can be run off cloud local. It has dual extruders and an actively heated chamber, and yes, it is multicolor ready, like I mentioned earlier. That's a lot of features. The H2D is aimed at hobbyists, really, and makers and crafters, and the prosumer market. Support is via email, which can be a concern for businesses that rely on these type of machines. Now, the build volume also sets them apart. The F200 gives you a very usable 256 millimeter cube. It's a mid-sized 3D printer, it's very common. It's clean, it's symmetrical, and it's easy to manage. The H2D is massive with a 350 by 320 by 325 millimeter helmet class build volume. Now, you'll run out of filament, I think, before you'll run out of space in this machine. Both use a magnetic PEI flexible build plate, and also, the F200 has a maximum bed temperature of 140C, which is hot, while the H2D maxes out, I think, at about 120C. The hot end on the F200 reaches a max temperature of 320C, but the H2D gets a little bit hotter at 350C. And let's not forget that actively heated 65C heated chamber on the H2D. As for the F200, it's a passively heated chamber, and like I said in the previous video, I saw temps get up to about 65C when I was testing it here in the studio. This makes both machines ideally excellent for your more exotic filaments like ABS and ASA, polycarbonates, nylons. Here's where that gap really shows. And this is one of the most important aspects of any 3D printer today on the market. It all comes down to user experience. It really does. F3 Slicer is functional. It gets the job done and it's one of the most popular slicers in use today because it's based on Prusa Slicer. Bamboo Studio though, it is arguably the best slicer experience in all of 3D printing. It's fast, it's polished, and it's packed with features. Um, in fact, I mean, if anybody's out there using Orca Slicer, well, literally that's where it came from. Now, some might say that this is preference, but you'd have to be lying to yourself. Bamboo Studio changed our industry forever, and in a good way. Now, both of these have beautiful touch interfaces, both very custom, and if I had to give a winner on which user interface I think was easier to use, I would probably only slightly lean towards the H2D. It just feels more complete. It's the little things like the door sensors and the status messages on the display that make all the difference. 
This new studio was wildly expensive. So let me tell you about today's sponsor. Surprise, it's Polymaker. And on the screen right there, I have a special code called LM Show First Try that will save you 15% on your first order. And if you use my link, I get like a million dollars a spool of filament. So yeah, it's right there, loyal.ms slash Polymaker. Oh, and I don't know if you knew this while you're over there. Take a look. I have my own custom color called LM Sparkle Green. It's the absolute best filament color that exists. Yeah, go grab a spool. And it's a cool collector spool too. All right, back to the video. And now, print quality. Both machines were loaded with atomic filament ABS and told to print the exact same gear model using their default profiles. The Fusion 3 took just under about 10 hours and the H2D finished in about six. Now, this is almost always an issue every time I do one of these videos. Some of you will want me to slow down the H2D to print at the same speed as the F200. Some will want me to speed up the F200. And some of you are gonna want me to create a new custom profile with identical settings. And some of you are just going to complain no matter what. So this is the way it's done. This is about user experience with default settings that the average user would experience with each machine. So that's what we're comparing. Both the F200 and the H2D have a standard ABS profile. And that's what I selected for both, along with 0.2 millimeter layer heights and 15% infill. Now there was no warping at all on either print. Both are dimensionally accurate and they are spot on, like I said, in size and tolerance. Looking at the surface quality, the H2D is just a little cleaner overall. The top surface especially looks slightly more polished. In terms of motion artifacts, I think the H2D shows very little, almost none. The F200 print, while strong and precise, does have some visible anomalies where the part is hit with a certain type of lighting. But overall, I think that the H2D did a better job and it did it in nearly half the time. That's really impressive. Now here's some beauty shots of each print and I want you to look very closely and see what you like or don't like and then comment below on which one you think looks better. Which print represents the product produced by the best value. Does speed matter to you more than precision or is it the other way around? Now, ultimately, who are these printers for? The F200 is for you if you need commercial uptime and part repeatability. You're security focused or working in a controlled environment. You rely upon domestic US-based customer service. Now the H2D is for you if you want feature packed hardware at a competitive price. Maybe you love the print automation, the dual extrusion, and maybe the potential for multicolor support. Maybe you want one of the best user experiences in the entire hobby. Both 3D printers are impressive, but for very different reasons. One seems to be more for business, the other for power users, or maybe people who love options. Now I'm using both, and now you get to see what they're capable of. Different tools for different jobs, but both are in their place on a bench in the studio. Thank you for watching, and a special shout out to my YouTube and Patreon members. I couldn't do this without you. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.